How's it going guys? Welcome to Code Tech Tutorials. My name is Matt and we're going to be talking about design patterns. I'm going to do a whole series on these, cover as many as I can, and if I miss some, you guys can always yell at me in the comments, or if I miss something about the pattern, please leave a comment. There's always going to be someone that knows more than me about these, but I'm going to give you my general understanding of them, and I'm going to do them in C++ because that is my language of choice. You can use your language of choice. If you're using something with garbage collection, these are gonna be made a little bit more simple, but you know, every language has its advantages and disadvantages, so you make a choice there, but uh, C++ is my way to go. Also, if you want books on these, there is the Gang of Four design patterns. These are kind of the some of the OG design patterns, and I'll leave a link to this book uh, down below if you wanna purchase it and uh, have it available. It's super nice to just be able to chill in a loft and read books. So there's this one, and there's a few other books I wanna talk about too that I've looked at a lot. There's also this game programming patterns by Robert Nystrom. This one's really good too, so I highly recommend it. There's also a free online version, but I'll leave a link to these down below. And uh, purchasing them does help support the channel or purchasing them through the link. So uh, if you want them, I would appreciate it if you did it through my link. So I want to point out one other one because I know there's a lot of people interested in making games. And that is this Game Engine Black Book for Doom. This one, it's not necessarily about design patterns, but it has a lot of uh, critical game design stuff. So uh, also another one that's just highly recommended that I'll leave a link to down below. Inevitably, you'll see a lot of the design patterns throughout this book. So if you want to support me further, there's a Patreon. I'll say that once. I'm probably not going to do it in any of these other series other than at the very end. But uh, the reason I started finally making this talk was basically because it was suggested by someone on my Patreon. I have a link up there that allows you to uh, vote on topics that I cover. So any tier will get you that. And uh, of course, I appreciate any extra support. The Factory Pattern. If you've watched my demo RPG series, you've kind of seen it already with the way we do items and create monsters and stuff like that. So let's open up an editor and uh, get going. All right, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do a new project or solution here. Uh, just using Visual Studio 2022. You can use whatever build system and editor you're comfortable with, doesn't really matter a whole lot. Uh, but we're also gonna use CMake just to kind of keep it cross-platform because this is gonna be up on GitHub and I'm gonna just call this uh, Design Patterns. All right, looking good. So, so you're going to give us kind of a blank solution and we're just going to make uh, some folders and uh, here we go. We got design patterns with the CMake here and uh, well, the way it creates this uh, starting folder is it has a top level CMake that adds a subdirectory for the design patterns. So you can kind of do this at will. Now uh, we're going to have some additional subdirectories and we're just going to structure this. So I'm going to make a new folder and I'm just going to call it factory. So in this little CMake here, I'm going to just delete these design patterns here and in the CMake um, we're also going to, yeah, we're just going to take the CMake and put it in factory and we're just going to, once again, make yet another layer. There we go. And all this is going to have is add subdirectory once again for factory. And this will expand as we go. Uh, we'll keep the top level one nice and clean and we'll just keep adding to this design pattern ones as we go. Uh, for example, we'll make new folders later, but this first episode, we're just going to focus on the factory pattern and uh, we're just going to make a little example of it so you can see what it does. But first I want to talk about a little of the theory behind it before we dive in too much, because of course, with any of the, these design patterns, you need to know their use cases, or at least have an understanding of their use cases, because some of them are useful at certain times, basically, and other times they're redundant and, and kind of pointless. So. Uh, let me pull up a few threads and we'll talk about it. All right, so here's a thread on Stack Overflow that I thought was pretty helpful. Someone just asked when you use it instead of uh, just a constructor, because basically all the factory is is a bit of a glorified constructor. Now, the main point of it is you want to use this factory when the constructor is not enough or when you want to do some additional things and the constructor doesn't quite handle it, because to be quite frank, the constructor is a factory. If you have a class and it has a constructor, you just, you know, you make a new object and you're essentially, essentially factoring them out. But sometimes you actually want a front end to your class that uh, basically handles producing stuff. And there can be many reasons why, really depending on your program. If you're doing something with connections, maybe you want to manage those connections. If you're producing some sort of objects that render in your game, maybe you want to carefully manage some of the, the stuff that it's creating there because it, you know, talks to the resources. So the big point of it is the factory kind of is the middleman between constructing your class. And uh, also it's sometimes quite a bit redundant. It's one of actually the least used 
patterns after a while from what I understand because it often just isn't necessary anymore but nonetheless it is still a pattern and we are going to cover it. So there's all kinds of things in this thread. I'll leave a link to it also down below, but you can uh, you can see that a lot of people have a lot of different opinions on it. Um, some people say things like one situation where I find factory to make sense is when your object creates on or relies on creating several other objects as well. Cause you know, you can have, you know, you have your constructor, but uh, sometimes you want a factory to produce multiple things and kind of put them together and produce them and put them together. So. That's, that's one case, but uh, there are others. All right, so let's finally get into the code. All right, back to Visual Studio here and in our factory folder, we're just gonna make a, let's make a main.cpp. We just need something to create. So I like doing things game related just because I think they're easy to understand. Uh, you know, we could do places, we could do creatures, we could do items. For now, we're just gonna do creatures. So I'm gonna make a, a creature. And I'm just making a dot H here and we're just gonna work up a class real quick little creature class. I'll, I'll make this bigger. So in this file, this creature.h, we're going to have class creature and publicly we're going to have uh, a constructor, of course, we'll have a creature and we're just going to go ahead and define that right here in the header for the moment, just to save space. And we'll, we're going to need a destructor as well. Now there's a lot of different ways of doing this. Uh, people often like to make these virtual because just a base creature doesn't tell you much. So we're going to have different types of creatures and we're going to factory them out. And I'm going to show you a few tricks along the way. And of course, once again, I'll say this, uh, there are many different ways to do this. This is not the only way. This is just how I like to do it uh, at times. You know, we uh, need some fields here to fill out and work with. So it's pretty safe to assume that every creature has, uh, let's just, let's just pick a few things, uh, a few stats. Let's have, let's have an integer for hit points and we'll default it to one. You know, we're going to do away with this constructor. We're going to let it be implied. Uh, that'll be fine. Cause with all these equals here, it basically implies a default constructor and you don't necessarily need to type it out. C++ will plus the back end will, will handle that for you, but your language may vary. So do what you gotta do. So we'll have another one. We'll just have speed and we'll make the default speed one. And we'll also have just a uh, attack and we'll start that at one as well. Actually, we'll start that one at zero because some things are just totally harmless. But, uh, you know, maybe think some things don't really move either. Like an amoeba doesn't move too much. Probably has a speed of zero. That's a weird example, but you, you probably get the point. But everything's got to have at least one hit point because we're going to consider zero hit points not uh, conscious or something like that. Well, there, that would bring up another debate because a lot of things aren't conscious, but they're still alive. Let's sigh. Okay, fine. We'll start the hit points at zero. I'm defeating myself with my own logic. So anyways, the whole point here is we have a creature um, that, is, that is something, and this is what we're going to factory out. Now we want some other virtual methods here. This virtual thing's optional. Let's just get rid of virtual. Let's not make it too confusing here. Um, those will be handy a little later with some tricks, but here we just have a base creature. And now what we want to do, let's, we could do it in the same file down below, but instead let's make a new file and let's just call this, you know, we'll make our first creature. Let's just call it a, a dog. So we'll just make a dog.h. We got to include our creature and we're going to make a class dog and it's going to publicly inherit from creature. That way it gets all those stats. Uh, but this one's going to be a little different. Uh, we're going to drive it here, and this one, we're just going to make the, the, the stuff different. So let's have a default constructor for the dog here, almost doge. Um, and the doge is going to take HP, speed, and attack. All right, we could have other stuff, you know, anything your creature might want to do. We could have it, uh, we could have a dude, or we could have like hunger levels, whatever you want to do. It's totally up to you. And what you're designing but we already got all the fields in here because it's a dog uh, but another thing we might want is just like a whole set of getters and stuff so i'm going to slap those in the creature real quick that way we have them available for all the subclasses and don't have to type them a bunch of times so we're just going to have int uh i don't think it's lowercase or camel case uh get hp and that's just gonna return the hit points and we'll have that down the line for all this stuff i'm just gonna do some copy paste action there we go. That makes it easy enough. That way you have access to those private va variables, uh, but we can only set them the normal way. Actually, you know, a point of making something in here virtual is uh, we don't want to be able to instantiate just a plain old creature. So that 
that's a thing you can do. So maybe we want uh, something to do that. Um, so we'll just make a spawn function. That's easy enough. Now this is kind of putting the factory inside the creature itself, which might be a little, uh, a little weird, but it's not that big of a deal. So uh, we got a spawn here and we got a dog over here. So this might actually be better as like a, a dog factory or something like that. Because then we would just, uh, you know, we'd have the same constructor stuff, but then we'd have, you know, we want to override the void, the spawn function, and have it do something. So what would it do? All right, so let's uh, let's maybe back up a little bit and just think of this slightly different way. All right, so we have this creature. It's a very base type. Let's let's just get rid of the spawn and let's just say oh, we're gonna put all our main supported ones in here. So maybe we're doing a game with, uh, you know, very specific stuff. So we'll just actually take this uh, dog here and just put it down below. And we don't even need to like put anything super fancy here. So our game has dogs, right? Maybe you want to do this for everything. Uh, I'm just going to keep it real simple. So uh, we'll have a, a cat as well. And then we'll have uh, we'll have a mouse. Sure, that's fine. Maybe you have fantasy creatures like dragons and goblins and elves and stuff. That's that's fine. I'm just, just keeping it super simple here. So all of these have uh, have these stats. Uh, have all this stuff ready to go. Now, if we want to make a factory of them, we're going to need to do it a little differently. So, uh, so example, we have a dog factory and a, uh, well, let's start with the factory. So let's actually name this like a creature factory or it's just spawner. We'll just call this spawner. Now, of course you could separate all these classes into separate files. Some people might like that better, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this. What we'll call this, uh, spawn. Spawner, and uh, we just need a base spawner here. So it's going to have a uh, destructor, of course, spawner, like so. Uh, and we probably want to make this virtual. Yeah, let's make it virtual. A virtual spawner, destructor, would need to do anything uh, right now. And I guess we don't need the semicolons at the end of uh, the definitions here. Okay, yeah, we're good there. All right. But we also want for the spawner. It doesn't, we don't want it to do anything on its own. It's just something we want to inherit from. So we're going to have another virtual function called just spawn. But uh, we got to decide what we're spawning. Spawn creature. Sure, that could be fine. Gotcha. Okay, so we'll have the spawn creature. Have it equal zero, just like that. Eh, we don't really need any private functions. This basically means we can't instantiate creature on its own or the spawner on its own. And, uh, well, we kind of want to do the same thing with this uh, creature. So... Let's just make this virtual as well. We'll come back to this creature one. I want to show you another little trick, but uh, essentially we'll just leave it like that. All right, let's go back to the spawner. So now we want to have like a class for each one of these. So we'll have a, a dog spawner. And this is going to be essentially our factory. So we need to inherit from the spawner. And of course, we're going to need to implement this spawn creature. So uh, let me see if we have the helper. Yeah, implement pure virtuals. Let's see. No, oh, it's... Uh, not quite enough, smart enough to do it, but uh, we can just uh, copy this and clean it up a little bit. Oh, we need a void or something here, or we need it to return something uh, that it actually spawned. And of course, it's always going to return a creature of some sort. And since these are virtual, we can use the power of polymorphism to always just return a creature, but it can be the correct creature as we go. And uh, these have different, you know, these don't have any different things. They're, they have different names, but we haven't like given them any special stuff. So we should probably do that at some point here. Like the main way we're going to do that is we would do it with like the default constructor and we would give it uh, hit points something else. Now it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense since, well, yeah, let's say a dog will always have at least one hit points and it always has a speed of at least one. So, and it always has the attack of at least one and that would be fine. Maybe we'll, you know, we'll, we'll adjust a little bit. Maybe dog's got uh, three hit points, uh, speed of three and an attack of three. And we'll just kind of go down the line with power in general. You know, this is not going to be a, a perfect thing, but let's, let's just get these set up because I'm going to assume here that dogs are a little bit stronger than cats. Cats are a little bit stronger than mice. So we can just do a nice scaling one, two, three is uh, all I'm going to do here. So we can essentially just uh, copy this down like so, change these to twos. And this will just give us a nice semblance of a, a hierarchy of the power of creatures. Now, obviously they'll have their own little special abilities, which would make a whole lot of sense too, but we're not going to worry about that too much right now. Mouse cat. What's a mouse cat? You guys ever seen that cartoon cat dog? What about mouse cat? Have you seen mouse cat? <laughs> All right. Well, you get the point here. So now they have slightly different stats from their default constructors, which is uh, totally fine. 
and that needs expanded a little bit naturally if we want to actually make it a little more useful but it depends on your game but okay so let's take this dog spawner let's override this spawn creature let's see if it lets us do it properly now no, we've no could not be implemented blah, blah blah something anyway we need to take this and basically we're going to return a new dog and that's that's it that'll spawn them so you can make a dog spawner and you can call a spawn creature and or or just spawn i like i like this to be a name spawn it's uh enough and it'll return you a new dog now it's really important to realize at least with the language without garbage collection like c++ this is returning a pointer to the dog and it's doing it as a creature so when you use it as a dog you're going to have to cast it to a dog uh, well specifically if it has its own stuff now this is getting into polymorphism logic so i don't want to get too deep into it but right now the dog only has this base stuff so you don't even really need to cast it it's when the dog has like well maybe it has a uh just another field of its own and that's when you need to uh cast it to a dog to use its own special dog fields uh, so hope that makes sense so i guess in this case a dog would have something like bark um well we'll just make a function called bark uh we probably want to do this publicly for the dog uh, we should we got to put public here it's going to assume everything private we don't want that so well, yeah we'll get we'll get a we'll get a bark function here uh, yeah, I guess it makes sense to go down the line. Let's, uh, of course, make these public, or else it's not going to work. Uh, we'll avoid meow and uh, a squeak for the mouse. That's pretty cool. That differentiates them a little bit, and that way we can uh, mess with the casting if we need to. Void mouse. I mean, void squeak. How do you spell <laughs> My brain's not functioning. There we go. Is that right? No, it has a U in there somewhere. Oh, my gosh. How do I not know how to spell squeak? Oh, it's the, the U's right here. Okay. These, some of these English words trip me up, so don't feel bad. A lot of people always say they, they're they bad at English or whatever. I'm, I'm worse. And it's my native, native language. Don't feel too bad. All right, so let's make some quick functions here. They don't even need to actually do anything. We could have a C out that just says whatever uh, real quick if we wanted to, but uh, we really just want to get it in there just to make sure we can actually call the function. All right, so there we go. we got a nice little dog, cat, mouse system. They're all creatures, and we can spawn them by making spawners uh, just like so. We can do the same for the others. Let's, I'm just gonna copy these down real quick, make a cat spawner that returns a new cat, a uh, mouse spawner that returns a new mouse. And here we basically have a factory system uh, started out. So now let's give this a quick test and then I'll show you one other trick and we can go from there. All right, so in our main here, let's just have it main and we'll just go ahead and create a spawner. So we'll just include uh, the spawner. Now the spawner includes creature first thing. So just by including the spawner, we are getting all the definitions for the creature and then all the spawn stuff. So it should be ready to go. So let's just instantiate one. Let's say, all right, well, obviously your game or program or whatever is gonna be a lot com more complicated. Whenever you instantiate your objects, it's going to make sense for what you're doing, but we're just uh, basically running a test here. So we're just going to start out. Well, let's start with a dog. Actually, yeah, dog's fine. And uh, we're going to have this uh, be dog one, like Shiloh. We're just going to name him dog one. And uh, we're going to call this spawner. Uh, well, the spawner is an object. So if we want the dog spawner to work like that, we are going to have to go. Uh, we're going to need a spawner. So we're going to need a dog spawner. Uh, we'll just call it DS. So DS, and then we're going to call the function spawn. And that is going to return a pointer to a new creature that is a dog. And we should be able to uh, show its stats. So I'm going to go ahead and include uh, IOStream real quick here, just so we can confirm that it's a dog. And uh, I'm going to do one other thing real quick. I'm going to go back to creature. Um, let's make these return, well, just trying to think how to properly call bark meow squeak. I guess, you know, it's just going to make a compiler error if it fails. So we don't necessarily need to see out stuff because if we try to call, for example, dog one, um, we get all these public functions and you can see there's bark because it's a dog. But what we could do is if we have a big array of these and we're creating a bunch, maybe you don't necessarily know what it is yet. You could just do creature in that way. Um, it only has the ones from creature. It doesn't have bark yet. So you would have to cast it first. You would have to go, all right, um, a dog each equals uh, dog one, except you need to, to cast it and make sure the cast is successful. So we could do dynamic cast to a dog, the 
dog one. And if this succeeds, a dog will not be null. And then we should be able to call it. Okay. And this way we should be able to uh, make this dog one, which is just a creature, uh, actually bark. However, you got to watch out for null because if this fails, it's null. So if you have a big array of a bunch of creatures and you want to see if it's a dog, you try to cast it to a dog. If it succeeds, it is. If it fails, it's null. So you got to be careful though, because if it's null, you don't want to try to call something in it. Otherwise you're going to get a, uh, your program's going to crash. So you need to be careful about that kind of stuff in C++. Uh, it's just the way it works. Some, some cool features with this dynamic casting. Um, how far do we want to go with this? I don't know. As far as we want, I guess. Because we could go, for example, uh, I'm just going to call these C1, uh, C2, and C3. So maybe you have some sort of randomizer that might spawn different things. Because, uh, you know, there's a dog spawner. Let's also make it a, a uh, cat spawner. We'll call this one CS for cat spawner. And let's say we have our now spawner. Just a quick example here of putting them in a array. Uh, maybe you have something that, yeah, randomizes creating them. But, uh, so here, let's make a, a cat and a mouse. And let's just spawn each. But they're all just, just creatures. So instead of having a C1, C2, C3, we could instead have a uh, creature array. Uh, and we'll just call this creatures. Let's have a pointer here. Actually, yeah, yeah, let's have a creature here. And let's say there are just three for now. So look at the size of the array. Now, this might be better as a vector or something. But of course, we should initialize all these to the null. Null pointer, null pointer, null pointer. There we go. That should do for now. Just a quick initializer list. And then we want to go through and create all these. Now, you'd probably want to do these in a loop, obviously. But, uh, you know, for sake of example, we're going to just make a quick row like this. And that way we can uh, just go down the line. There we go. So there's three different types of creatures in here, but they're all just creatures. So now when we go to, to do stuff, uh, we want a little uh, unpacking array. So uh, we'll just start it at zero. We'll just do a quick quick hack here now there's ways to do this better dynamically obviously and if you want to do that and change it on github and and make a pull request you can that'd be cool but that's uh, uh up to you so uh y is less than three uh, plus plus and let's just do the thing so now uh let's do a switch statement here so we want to check if it is uh, what kind of creature it is basically uh so we want to switch on the creature type now this gets a little tricky here because we need to uh, do something to see what it is. Uh, or, you know, we'll just do, you know, a switch statement would be better in the long run, but we'll just do a quick if uh, right here. So we can say, uh, we can just check castings here, I guess would be the case. Yeah, so let's try the first casting. Uh, we'll say, uh, let's make a dog uh, and cast the, the first one. Uh, dynamic cast to a dog, pointer, and it's a creature I can spell correctly. That'd be great. Uh, it's got to be parentheses like that. Just do the dynamic cast syntax correctly. So let's try to cast the first creature to the dog. So if dog, so basically if it's not null, since this is the pointer, then we could go uh, dog bark. However, if it is null, then it's not a dog. It's something else. Now we know this one is a dog because we see it right here. But if you have a bit complicated program with the, it being randomly allocated and whatnot, you're not necessarily going to know. So these dynamic casts, you can do a runtime and uh, see what it actually is. Now, of course, uh, yeah, demo RPG, we did a bunch of this kind of stuff. So it happened a lot in there. But you want to do the same thing for other stuff. So if it is a dog, and uh, you want to return, basically, because you don't want to do any further checks necessarily. But I guess you could it's not gonna it's not gonna necessarily fail uh but we're probably done if you're done you can return not return continue which will basically start the next loop continue that'll just start the next loop with continue there but uh you know we could we could keep going so let's just copy all this let's say what if it's a cat you know uh we don't want this to be zero we want this to be i because we're going through a loop cat cat dot you know that way we don't call these if it's null so only if it actually is cast correctly. And that's what we call these. And you can see that uh, even the auto syntax is kind of assuming that it cast correctly, but it's not necessarily going to. It could be null. So that's why you got you got to do this if and check if it's null or not. And we'll do one real quick for mouse, and then we'll give this a quick run. And you know, real quick, I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna go uh, over to creature. I just want these. Uh, bark meow and squeak to actually do something uh, because it'll just make it a lot more clear. So let's just make a quick standard see out. All right, 
arf on that one, and uh, we'll do it on these other ones too. Meow. Eek, eek, eek. I don't know. Whatever a squeak sounds like. Close enough. Okay, but you get the point here. So now we should see those different terminologies will, will come up when we call those, those functions there. So uh, we have our main here. Now we actually haven't made our CMake. Let's fix the CMake. Uh, so we're going to have this one's called uh, factory. Little factory, and it relies on main.cpp. Let's put the headers in here too creature.h, spawner.h. And there we go. We'll give that a save and see if it compiles correctly. Oh, well, we have this target thing going on. I don't. I don't normally use this target thing, but whatever. We'll uh, we'll fill it out. It just came with the default thing. CMake generation finished. Uh, so now we can bring up our terminal with Control tilde here, or you can open up your own terminal. Now let's put it down here, and uh, you can see we have a terminal. So we can see what we're looking at. We can go to the out. Uh, we can go to the build. This might be really tiny. So I apologize. I don't know if I can make this one bigger. No, I can't. It just beeps at me very loudly when I try to. Okay, but here we can see we got the x64 debug, x64 debug, and in here we have a uh, design patterns, and then we have factory deep, deep in there. And you can see no, we haven't we haven't built anything. We got build ninja. Um, we basically need to run our CMake on this whole thing. So let's back up a bunch. Thought it was going to auto run it but whatever let's, let's run it manually see make uh, build into oh uh, well let me, let me check something here. all right so i'm going to just go to this top level right click it and go to open and explore and we're just going to have a peek around and see what it's generated here um so yeah out build debug uh design patterns factory you know see make files not okay so nothing here we should see like a solution or something but it doesn't seem to have have done that so maybe we got a bit of an error uh, i don't see an error though let's just uh let's just check this out let's configure it to x64 release and see what it does oh we got a bit of an error here in our code oh, we're trying to set private variables uh, so for inheritance, we're going to do these as protected that way, whatever is inheriting from them has access to them. They're, they're semi-private, but, uh, we can still set them in the subclasses now. So, uh, we'll just do that real quick. All right. And now let's see if we can get this going. Let's look at the debug one. Yeah. We're not, we're not seeing it yet. We should see a solution. We got CMake install. I don't know what's going on here. I think I maybe need to set something about this build system that I haven't yet. So, uh, oh, here we go. So we want to we want to click this up here and set it to the factory.exe. Then we should be able to actually use our play button. Here we go. We'll hit our play button and it's going to build, do the whole thing. All right, and it looks like we have successfully done it. We went through all three. We got an arf, a meow, a meow, and an eek. So it did detect all three. But if they're randomly different, it would just work. And uh, there you go. So that's that's a very quick example of a factory. Now, someone mentioned, and we'll, so we'll expand this a little, a little further, because as you can see, someone mentioned uh, if you have multiple things being tied together, that's better for a factory. Because we don't really need the factory here. I mean, if we're just looking at this, it's it's really redundant. We don't even, we don't need these spawners. We could literally just go... Uh, creature equals you know we could just set one of them to to new dog for example and that would work pretty much the same as the spawner because the spawner is essentially just constructing one and returning the, the memory so it makes the whole spawner kind of pointless in a way um and and that's and that's why this pattern sometimes isn't used and that's where it's like you know it's not that useful if this is all you're doing so let's make it a little more fancy so we have these spawners there, whatever. Actually, uh, we'll leave them. But what if, for example, we want to spawn a pack of dogs? So let's go class uh, pack pack of dogs. All right. So this is where it's going to get a little more interesting. Here. So uh, make this correct. Uh, public spawner. So for example, this could return just a whole bunch. So public. Uh, let's have it return a creature spawn um so now do we want to return one or do we want to return a bunch probably a bunch well let's think about this a little bit here if it's going to be an array well we can work with that from a pointer but it's going to get a little messy and maybe you know some of the dogs have different stats maybe you want a alpha dog that has bigger stats so the point would be that you could create a spawner that that spawns it does a bunch of things and returns the whole thing so you might want something to, to signify that. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to get into that too much here. You can be creative and come up with this if you want, but uh, that would be like a better 
spawner because rather than just creating one dog we could actually make you know we could basically generate encounters this way and, and stuff like that but the whole thing would just start becoming a bit different so uh it would be something like uh you know it'd still be a return new dog but then we probably want to do some some more randomization or add some parameters like uh right now the way that these are this constructor doesn't take any parameters all of these are hidden behind protected so we don't have access to them so we could change these or we could put like we could have it actually take variables in the constructor and then we could construct different ones in our spawners and yeah you know that would be a little better uh, for something that way we could have an alpha dog and make it bigger and stuff like that now it's it's probably getting a little confusing at this point but uh just keep that in mind and if you want to do an implementation of a multi-spawner you could do that like we could add to this uh let me think about this actually let's let's get rid of this function so let's go back to this dog spawner and let's go uh creature star spawn spawn pack in this we could, you know, we just basically have to add to our an array and return that whole thing. But also you need to know how many are in the array. Otherwise you're going to get hit with some trouble going through the array. Well, when you could do some tricks, like you could, uh, you know, you could check the memory sizes and all that and figure it out. But at this point, it would honestly make a little bit more sense to just do like a vector or something. So let's, uh, let's just do that real quick as an example. We'll knock that out. So we'll go standard vector creature star so we're going to return a vector of creature stars and it's a, it's a pack of dogs it says so uh maybe we'll do a random amount so we need some sort of randomizer i'm gonna i'm gonna not do the randomizing right now just because you know we'd have to bring in the whole random library and start going through all that but uh that's and that's not necessarily what this is about but uh, you know you probably want some random stuff so we'll just make like uh let's just do a for loop Let's say a pack of dogs, uh, you'd probably want to random the size and, you know, random the alpha's power and all, all that. We're not going to do that. It's just, it's just too much trouble uh, for this particular tutorial. We'll start I at zero. I is less than, I don't know, we'll say five. It's going to be pack of five dogs. Uh, that'll, that'll be fine for now. And uh, oh, we need a return vector here. So let's just take this type and we'll call, we'll just call this variable the return pack. So we'll just go return pack dot push back. And it'll just be new dog over and over. It'd be better with random stats. I'll say that again, because right now they're just going to be all the same type. But at the end, after we go through this loop and fill out the whole thing, we could just re return our return pack. There are other fancier ways you could do this. Like you could have this, just for example, you could have this void and you could have this be right here and do it this way. So if you're returning multiple things, you could pass them in by reference. And we'll, oh, we'll just call this the out pack. And then you could do it this way. So there's some varying different ways. This is kind of better if you're returning multiple things, pass it in by reference. So it's something you actually have access to and you don't have to return. You just have to fill it out and it's done. So boom, you fill out your memory with spawn pack. And uh, there we go. That'd be, that'd be five dogs basically. And this way, let's go ahead and just do that. Let's do a, a pack, um, spawn a pack of dogs test. So here we go. Uh, basic creature oh yeah i'll we'll, we'll just comments test uh casting creatures to proper type okay so spawn a pack of dogs test how are we going to do this well we need our vector of uh creatures let's call this one dog pack and now we want to take the same dog spawner because we just added the functionality to it and now we have spawn pack and we need something to fill out which is going to be this dog pack and there we go that should be it and now we should essentially be able to go through this same loop um and well we already know they're all dogs but we probably have this in a in a function you know you want to probably separate your for loop or your whole casting thing rather than copy paste but uh yeah maybe i'll just do that okay we'll just i'll just that real quick uh Test casting types. Okay, I don't know. We'll just do that. That that works for now. Well, nah, forget it. I'll just we'll we'll keep going through the loop. See, the problem with that is that well, this one's a vector. So actually, we can just use some C plus plus functions. Uh, we already know we got the dog pack, so we can just do like const auto um, by reference 
and we'll just say thing and in the dog pack. So there we can go. We can get every element in the dog pack here, and uh, it's just going to be a thing. No longer need the I. I don't know. This might, well, we'll have a compiler error if it doesn't like that this is const auto. I think maybe we actually want a pointer here. I don't know. I'll try it like this. Let's see what it does. Let's see if it uh, fails or not. Let's go back to here. Let's hit, hit our little run button. So let's see what happens. There we go. Okay, we get our first three. That's the same as before. That was uh, this code from there. Uh, and then we got our whole dog pack. And it's just five dogs all going arf. So we know that that spawning a whole pack works too. And if there happen to be some cats and mice in this spawn, so maybe we have even a more advanced spawner that spawns random ones, it would still properly do this casting because, or it would still properly do the right thing because we got this casting. So it, it doesn't hurt to have it, I guess is the point. And I guess the thing we'd want to break down into a function would be all these right here, because you would just pass it this, try all the casting and then see what happens. Um, but that's that's pretty much it. All right, this is getting a little long. You probably see the point of these of this factory pattern. Hopefully, you've had some fun. I'm just going to show you one last little cool trick, and then uh, we'll end this episode. Now, this last little trick actually comes from the game programming patterns book, uh, and that's where I learned it at least. And it's basically the whole prototype method. So, if you have a creature. Let's see, we got we got these creatures here. Now, obviously, they're all the same. They all have three hit points, three speed, three attack, whatever. Uh, let's just make a fifth one, and we're gonna we're gonna have this one be a prototype uh, creature. So we'll call this. We'll do something a little different with this one. We'll have a class called a uh, I don't know. Let's do a dragon. Dragon this time. No, we'll just do lizard. Lizard's fine. It's a public creature, and we're just gonna make this one a little different. This one's gonna be. Uh, this one won't need a spawner, and you'll see why here shortly, because uh, we're going to do some stuff differently with it. So let's take this lizard, and let's go. Uh, let's actually take variables in this time. Int HP, int speed, int stack, and I don't know. What else might a lizard have? Oh, it'll make a hiss sound. We'll just go void hiss. Sure, why not? And uh, we'll just do this. I guess a lizard hisses. There we go. All right, but anyway, we want rather than just setting them directly, they're actually going to be set to uh, whatever we pass in. So we got all types of lizards. And don't worry, I'm getting to the, the actual point in a second. I just got to do this little setup. So now we want another method in here. All right, and this method would be virtual clone. All right, so we're going to have it do, we're going to have it return a creature. And you probably want this pure virtual. I'm not making it pure virtual specifically because I haven't implemented it in this dog, cat, mouse setup. So it's going to complain if I don't. But normally, rather than return no pointer, you would have this equal to zero. Uh, but I'm just returning their pointer in case it's a dog, cat, or mouse. Because clone's not going to work on them, basically. Uh, it's just going to return null. But we're going to make clone work for this lizard. Uh, and the way we do that is we just, we just implement it. We go... Uh, Creature star clone return you lizard and it's going to have its current hit points, speed, and attack. So essentially what this will do is it will create a whole new lizard, but it's going to have the exact same stats as this current lizard. So with this sort of setup, you can you can clone your creature and you don't even really need a spawner anymore. You just make an initial prototype lizard and then you just call clone whenever you need new ones. So it's sort of a variant on the factory design pattern is to do this clone sort of thing. And it's super cool too, really. So uh, I'm just going to put it down here, uh, clone test. So we're going to take that lizard. We're going to go uh, creature star lizard equals new lizard. We, we didn't make a factory for this. Oh, it needs some stats. I don't know. We'll go we'll just type in some random things. Uh, there we go. It's a really beefy lizard. Uh, what are we missing here? See, we don't, we didn't make a spawner for it. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Uh, we're skipping it, but essentially pretend we did the same thing here. Actually, whatever. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go lizard spawner, public spawner. Got to fill out this pure virtual return new lizard. Now the lizard is different. Um, because uh, we we don't have a constructor that takes nothing. The constructor needs something, which is essentially how we should do the others. But uh, whatever. So maybe we want some random. But we just we're gonna put something in there for now, just so we can test it. Uh, so we probably want a lizard spawner. 
uh, what did I call that? Lizard spawn. Yeah, I just, I literally just said the word, call it ls, ls dot spawn. There we go. And that's going to give us that lizard. I'm, I'm sure cutting a little bit to make this easier. But now the point here is, yeah, sure, we got our lizard, but, and it's going to make its hiss sound. So if we do this cast thing, except to lizard, we'll be able to get that going. I'm just going to call it Liz, Liz the lizard. And we now need our lizard here. Oh, it doesn't like this keyword. Uh, I'll just call it Liz C for Liz creature, lizard creature. I don't know. And then we're going to cast it here. And we got to make sure the cast is successful. So we got to see if it's not null. So if, if it's not null, then we'll call its function of this. Also, now we can clone it. Oh, we're casting to a lizard here. All right, and that's fine. But now we also have the clone function. Test uh, dynamic cast, test clone. Now let's see what let's test cloning. Test cloning. All right. So we obviously want to know uh, that it, uh, we want to make sure it actually casts correctly first because, well, let's see. I guess we're just going to get null pointer if it's not cast correctly. So actually it's fine. We don't even need to do this casting test because of the way we have it designed. If it was pure virtual, we would absolutely have to. But otherwise, we can just go, uh, Let's make another lizard here. Clone lizard equals, and we can just take this original creature one, Liz C dot clone, and there we go. We should be able to get the cloned lizard. Oh, okay, this needs to be creature two, because uh, the clone returns creature. So we can once again test cast the clone. Even though we're cloning it while it is still just a creature, uh, deep down inside it is actually a lizard. So this clone. It's not going to return the creature clone, but the one that it's actually is. So it should return this one here, or use this function. And uh, that's just the way that C++ is designed. So once again, we will dynamic cast this cloned lizard, uh, lizard clone, clone lizard, lizard clone. I don't know. I have to name these variables something. So let's just make sure that it's not null. Make sure it's actually a lizard and we'll call the hiss. So we should see two hisses here. We should see, uh, you know, after all the five barks in a row, we should see one hiss and then a two hiss. And the very last hiss will be uh, the successful thing. Let's return exit success at the end of this program. Should have done that way sooner, but it doesn't matter. All right. So if we get two hisses at the end, we know that that's all successful. And there we go. So very good. There's a, there's a little bit about the clone method. All right. There's some some factory testing and playing around with factories. This is this is a very, this episode went a lot longer than I expected. I was hoping to do it, I kid you not, I was hoping to do this in 10 minutes, but you know, I keep looking up here. My camera's not there anymore, it's down here. So thanks guys, greatly appreciate uh, all of you who support. Hope you learned something. If you did, consider hitting the like button. If you wanna see more code stuff, consider subscribing. My name is Matt, you'll see me around. And uh, if you wanna support further, links down below, Patreon, all that stuff. Uh, love you guys. Peace out.